I'm Old Sneelock. Welcome to another episode of Old Sneelock Workshop. Now the pieces and parts have dried out, so I'm going to put a coating of oil, linseed oil on these tills. I might have used shellac, except I really like boiled linseed oil. It's kind of a traditional coating. Does a nice job of sealing, and I like the smell of it. I don't think you can really put it on too heavy. I mean, you can put it on multiple coats. And if you put it on without thinning it with mineral spirits first, it can take days or even longer to dry. I don't think soaking things in minerals in I don't think soaking things in boiled linseed oil is necessary or even advantageous. Three or four light coats is more than enough to do any kind of sealing that you would need to do. And when you go to sand it then, just giving it a single coat of boiled linseed oil will make it so it doesn't fuzz up on you. And it can be put on with just a rag. I mix it about 50-50 with uh, odorless mineral spirits. I like odorless mineral spirits because there's no need for any odor in the mineral spirits except to keep it from drinking it. And I have enough sense to know that and I have enough sense to know that drinking boiled and I have enough sense to know that drinking mineral spirits is neither good for you nor pleasant. And I have enough sense to not put it in a glass or a bottle that, you know, like a soda bottle. Now, I have to admit there are times that I have seen people putting things in pop bottles or even whiskey bottles because they were convenient and I'm not saying that they had a bunch of whiskey bottles sitting around but they had more than what they needed so they used those to hold mixed up items and it's not a good thing I don't think putting anything in a container that used to hold foodstuffs other than foodstuffs that are meant for drinking or eating is a good idea. I'll give you an example of a, a bad situation. It didn't happen to me, but I watched it happen. Back when we were younger, people used to actually smoke cigarettes. Yeah, they, they smoke cigarettes, just like they smoke, yeah, actually they smoke cigarettes. Cigars, cigarettes, pipes, all kinds of tobacco, even chewed tobacco. Not vaping like the modern guys do, thinking it's a helpful, better way of smoking. No, they actually burnt tobacco and inhaled the smoke. I used to do it myself. Well, when you smoke cigarettes, 
One of the things that you're always looking for was ashtrays because there was always an ash hanging off the end of the cigarette. And if you didn't have an ashtray, it ended up getting dropped on the floor and it would really mess up a carpet or just in general mess up a room. Quite often, there wasn't a designated ashtray available handy in the area. And at this time, pop cans had come out. Not the new ones with the little tab that you pop up and the tab stays with it. No, this was a, a can that you Hold an aluminum tab. It's actually kind of an innovation. It's a new thing. You pull the tab and the bottle, the can, open. And then smart people would set the tab someplace and the not so smart ones would drop it inside the can. Then you would have the open top can without any, without the need for a church key or a pry bar or whatever you wanted to call the various pointy pieces of equipment that we used to open them. And it made it so that pop cans became really, really ubiquitous. There were lots of them around. So out in the shop, we would have a pop can that we were drinking and every once in a while, you empty one. Well, concept was you, you threw it away, discarded it, because there wasn't any refund or return on the pop cans. So you just tossed it in the wastebasket. But then every once in a while, some enterprising individual would decide that, hey, I've got this pop can here and I'll just tip the ashes off my cigarette right into that opening on top of the pop can. Then they would set the pop can down and go on about their job. Well, every once in a while, not very often, but every once in a while, it'd be more than one person working in the shop or somebody would be working on a project and getting really wrapped up in it all occupied with the idea of having this project going and wanting to get it done. And they would be working away and they'd get thirsty and walk over to the window and grab up their pop can and pull the slug off of it and realize that it was a half-dead pop can with cigarette butts floating in it. Yeah, I watched that happen. A friend of mine did it. We laughed ourselves silly doing it. I mean, it was really kind of cruel because it was a nasty thing to have happen to anybody. But it was funny that he spit, sputtered, and nearly threw up. And he didn't ingest any of the cigarette butt. Well, probably got a little ashes. But he certainly did notice that he had a cigarette butt in his mouth. So that's why you don't put anything in a consumable container. So if you don't do that, and you keep your mineral spirits in a clearly marked, identified container that says, oh, old world style ragu. Hmm, maybe this isn't such a good container. But then, I'm not likely to pour any of this over spaghetti.
why am I doing this on top of the toolbox? Well, I'm doing it on top of the toolbox because I'm going to soak down the lid on the toolbox with oil linseed oil. And that way, it will help seal the top of it. And it dries quickly. And once again, it's traditional and I like doing it. So there it is. That's the two tills that are soaked in boiled linseed oil mixed with 50-50 mineral spirits. And they can dry overnight. Now, I'm going to soak the top of this toolbox. Boiled well, linseed oil acts like a pretty good primer too. Soaks in really good. So I'm going to let it seal up this canvas before I paint it. And since I want to stain the inside and I have some sanding to do on it before I stain it. let this dry and I won't put any of this on the inside of the toolbox. At least not right now. There. Boiled linseed oil has got a unique property. It oxidizes. Boiled linseed oil has got a unique property. It oxidizes. When it's exposed to air, it oxidizes and generates heat. But if it's in a closed container, the surface is uh, large enough that it doesn't have when it's in a closed container the capacity of the uh, boiled linseed oil is such that it doesn't overheat there's not much oxygen in that little container and just the top surface of the oil is able to to oxidize so it pretty much doesn't uh, 
but if you have it on a rag, that rag presents a huge amount of surface area. So that boiled linseed oil oxidizes rather quickly in that large surface area because it has a lot of oxygen available. So my little rag that I was using to wipe the boiled linseed oil on this chest, if I left it out, it's a pretty small rag for one thing, and it's not a whole lot of boiled linseed oil on it just because of the size. But it still has the opportunity to oxidize quickly, and it can generate quite a bit of heat and actually catch fire. Spontaneous combustion. But if I keep it in the jar, especially if I keep it in the jar below the surface level of the boiled linseed oil, then it can't get exposed to oxygen. It doesn't catch fire. So that's why I keep my little rag down here in the bottom of the jar so I don't have to keep throwing away rags and it's been in there now for, I don't know, five, six years, doing just fine. I have mentioned that if you're gonna put things into a, a jar that used to contain consumable items, they should be clearly marked. Well, this one is. It's marked boiled linseed oil. Now the outside, <laughs> And several of the guys have mentioned that, oh, that's ragu. So now I have the top of the toolbox covered with boiled linseed oil. I have the tills covered with boiled linseed oil. I can let it sit and dry out tonight, and then tomorrow I'll do some more work on it.